What is going on guys? Welcome to ESO Academy, my series where I teach you the basic fundamentals of ESO PvP and how to get better as a player. Today, we are going to debunk a myth in ESO. We're going to specifically look at two-handed weapons versus staffs, and specifically on magic classes. So whenever I'm live streaming on Twitch or making a video on my Magic DK or Magic Templar, a lot of people ask me, why am I not using a staff? And you know, the short answer is it just feels better for me. And it's not only that, but my light attacks and skills actually hit harder using a two-handed weapon versus a staff. But the long answer is just watch this video and I'll explain everything. But before we deep dive into it, make sure you guys are subscribed to my YouTube and have post notifications on so you never miss an upload. Also, I live stream on Twitch. The schedule is somewhat tentative, but for now we've been doing live streams every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pink and I have the best live streams on Twitch. I can guarantee you guys you will either laugh or learn something every single stream. Timestamps for this video are down below if you guys want to skip ahead, as well as other important links. With that out of the way, let's get back into the video. So in today's test, we're going to be looking at the Magic Dragonite. But there are other classes that you can use this melee type of playstyle using 2H or even dual wield. The other two classes besides DK are Magic Templar and Magic Nine Blade. The reason being is these classes have a very viable close range spec on their class. You know, with DKs, they have Molten Whip and Leap. For Templars, they have Puncturing Sweeps and Crescent Sweep. And for Night Blades, they have Conceal Weapon and End Cap. So they have a nice skill set to really accelerate them in a melee type of playstyle. But honestly, at the end of the day, it is really all preference. There are pros and cons of using you know, a staff or even a two-age weapon. And you'll kind of have to decide on which one is more beneficial to you. So for the melee setup, we're going to be using a Heartland Conqueror Maul, Shock Damage Enchant, and Sharpen Trait. 129 weapon and spell damage for running the two-piece. Um, and we are completely naked everywhere else. We have no jewelry on, no mythic items, no monster sets. For the staff setup, we're going to be using a Stoon Inferno Staff, Sharpen Trait, Shock Damage Enchant. So it's the same exact thing, 129 weapon and spell damage for running stuns, 129 weapon and spell damage for using Harlan Conqueror. They are the exact same. The only difference is, is passives and how Zenimax has the scaling for weapons. This test is 100% controlled as possible. That is the only things we are changing is just the weapon. So let's take a look at the passives and really deep dive into this. So for the 2H, we get some really good passives. They added the new heavy weapons passives in and this makes 2H weapons very viable on some magic specs now. So before it was just, you know, you had swords that gave you flat damage increase, you had axes that could proc a bleed, and you had maces that gave you just physical penetration. It was basically rendering magic classes from using melee weapons kind of useless. So this definitely is nice. Um, so we, for a mace, we get 3,300 armor penetration. So this is gonna affect our physical and spell penetration. Uh, also, the next passive is going to be the battle rush. So, with a two-handed weapon equipped, whenever we kill an enemy or a target, we get 30% more stamina recovery for 10 seconds. This is the one of the main reasons why I like 2H over dual wield. Personally, dual wield and 2H are pretty much identical. Uh, they have one minor passive that'll make dual wield have a little bit more damage, but this will overall give you more uh, stamina sustain. So for dual wield, let's go over that really quickly. So the main one is going to be while well, dual wielding, you increase your weapon and spell damage of your offhand by a few percentage. I think it's like 6% with two passives in there. It's It definitely helps you a little bit with damage, but it's not going to be a huge deal. Uh, the twin blade of blunt is basically the same. Uh, it's just halved because you can run like a, a sword and a mace if you want to kind of min max it's really up to you and your type of play style but also they have you know the daggers now that give you critical chance so there's going to be weapon critical and spell critical so it could be valuable nonetheless um to maybe look into that maybe but the dual wield and 2h are pretty much the same um there are some minor discrepancies here that not a lot of people really realize or just want to assume at max this i think gives you a 15 percent damage bonus when attacking stunned immobilized disoriented or silenced enemies so people think that this is going to affect their skills and it does not it affects only dual wield attacks so if you're a magic spec you're not getting any any extra damage uh unless you're using any of these skills right to do only the dual wield skills but what is going to increase your damage is going to be the dual wielding expert right so that is one caveat that not a lot of people realize or just want to assume. So now let's get into the Destro staff passives. So I do not have this passive in here because I use an ice staff and I like my, um, when I block on an ice staff, I like to make sure that I use stamina instead of magic. So there really is no difference here because this is just going to increase our heavy attack damage, not our light attack. 
So again, a discrepancy, just like with the dual wield, people assume this is going to affect their class skills, and it does not. So your destruction staff abilities ignore 10% of the enemy's spell resistance. So again, a lot of people assume that this is going to affect their whips, their embers, their burning talons, whatever. It does not only the destro staff skills. So it's only going to be the, the skills in here, like four shot wall of elements, destructive touch, elemental drain, impulse, and the destro ultimate. It's the only thing that this affects does not affect anything else. A good passive for the staff is going to be this one, the elemental force. So it increases the chance to apply elemental status effects by 100%. Definitely you will notice a difference in procking your burning, procking, you know, concussed with the shock damage glyph. It definitely is nice, but I don't think this is a game changer to use a staff over a 2H in my opinion and my playstyle. The only other notable passive that we have is going to be the ancient knowledge. Now this definitely does make a difference in your in your overall single target damage. This is going to affect your molten whips, your burning embers, your flames of oblivion, but it will not affect skills like ferocious leap because this is an area of effect skill, not a single target. So do keep that in mind. While this passive is nice, I don't think it's valuable enough to a swap from a 2H back to a staff. And finally, the nail in the coffin for me is if we want to have more spell penetration, we have to slot elemental drain. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but magic classes have a very rough time with skill slots. So I'm actually getting best of both worlds using elemental drain on the back bar and then using a 2H mace on the front bar because I'm actually getting more penetration. So be, having to slot uh, elements drain on my front bar is kind of rough. Um, I love Flames of Oblivion. I have to have a CC and Talent is nice. So, I mean, none of these skills can go away. So I have to figure out how to maneuver my skills around to, you know, kind of fit what I want. And that's what the 2 8 Mace provides me. It gives me a little bit more pen. Um, and it's just overall better. You know, increasing my damage to my skills more, increasing my light attack weaving more. We'll go into that here in a second. But that is, you know, basically the reason why I prefer 2H over a staff. Um, the next reason is let's check out the stats real quick. So look at my spell damage here. We have 2,700 spell damage and we have 7,276 spell penetration. So keep that number in mind. We're completely naked. We have nothing else on, right? So we have 2,700 spell damage. We swap to the staff. Students Inferno sharpened. Swap back. We have 2,464 spell damage so this is a 236 spell damage difference and with proc set scaling this is a very very crucial number to try to increase as much as you can for whatever reason Zenimax thinks it's a good idea to have more spell damage on weapons than stabs i don't make the game this i just play the game so it doesn't make sense to me personally but it is what it is you would assume that a staff would have more spell damage than a melee weapon but it is what it is but also we lost a lot of penetration here for you know dropping the mace so that is one big reason why we run a 2h because we get 2700 spell damage we're almost getting the same value of like julianos we're just changing from a staff to a 2h weapon we're also getting more pen but we are losing you know proccing more status effects and the single target damage but this honestly will make up for it it scales better getting more spell damage using molten whip using degeneration this will actually start to scale really really high using a 2h weapon so that is the main reason right there why we use a 2h weapon over a staff but we're now we're going to look at the damage of our skills so we're going to be using the heartland conqueror mall first we're going to just light attack and see what our damage is so let let the minor vulnerability go away hold on light attack 2331 so that is 2331 damage on the light attack so now we're going to look at the whip i'm just going to hit whip 5354 as a crit 5354 the stupid thing is glitch right now on console enhanced that's why the numbers pop up way over there like stupid stuff but 5354 whip that's our damage okay so now let's swap to the staff get a combat all right so now we have the staff on sharpened staff so we're just going to light attack it is a 2057 light attack 2057 that was our glyph proc 2000 there's a 2057 see so our light attack damage is 274 damage difference so let's hit whip real quick and let's look at that damage so 4994 so that is a 360 damage difference versus whip with a 2h weapon versus a staff 
So, I mean, the numbers don't lie. So let's let's hit degeneration really fast. And let's like kind of buff up and look at look at our spell damage difference. So we're gonna hit degen and three box of uh, of uh, molten. So we have 32, 26 spell damage. So now let's swap to our 2H maul. And let's look at the damage difference here of our, of our just uh, just our spell damage. So we're gonna again hit degeneration and then we're gonna get pro three procs of molten. So now we are at 3510. So we're just proccing major sorcery and proccing our flames of oblivion. Our spell damage went from 236 damage difference to a 284 damage difference. Again, that is almost like Julianos. So like that is why I think 2H weapons are much better than using a staff. Now that I've been dogging on, on the Inferno staff for a little bit, let's talk about some pros for the staff. So what are, what are a few pros? Well, for one, you know, the passives for the charge, that is definitely nice. But this is a pro. This is definitely a very valuable pro right here. A lot of attacks from range. Definitely is nice nonetheless. Uh, definitely could help you with duels a little bit, just uh, if you're cutting around a little bit. But uh, this definitely is nice to have. Just a little bit of poke damage with a light attack. It's nothing crazy, uh, but it definitely can help you in, in PvP. You know, just finishing somebody off that's just running around it's a little bit, and you can't reach them with a melee weapon or, or whatever the case is. Definitely is, is nice. Uh, again, with a charge is definitely really good, and the ancient knowledge. The cons, again, we'll go over this really quickly. Having to slot elemental drain if you're just using like a Destro Resto spec to get more value than using just a 2H Maul. Now, a lot of people will use elemental drain on their magic classes, but I just like to back bar it. I hate, again, for my reason, I, I don't have enough room. So I get the best of both worlds by using elemental drain on my back bar. So I can proc that. And I'm also getting the 2H uh, Maul extra penetration. So that is really the pros and cons of using a staff. Your damage is going to be a little bit lower, but you get the extra poke damage and the proccing of the sass effects. So that's a wrap, guys. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. The damage is there. We have more damage using a 2H than a staff. Uh, I feel like the pros outweigh the cons, you know, not using ranged attacks or proccing the sass effects. Because in reality, we're only going to be proccing two sass effects. It's only going to be the burning, which is going to proc immediately from burning embers. And then we have the vulnerability that's going to proc whenever we light attack using a shock damage enchant. That's really the only... Uh, type of of staff so you can proc on a magic dk so that's another reason why the passive on the deso staff is not as valuable as other classes would be so that's it for the video guys i hope you guys learned something and if you guys did please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one peace